Hey fellas, welcome to a, another exciting episode, and uh, I haven't filmed any of it yet, so I'm not really sure what's going to be on it. Well, kind of I do. Uh, we're going to build a base for this Joe Dirt car that I built while waiting for my next project to get here. So if you're not familiar with the movie, uh, you can get on YouTube and check out some clips, Joe Dirt, um, classic, classic movie. So anyway, <clears throat> built this up on my break, and uh, uh, it's a project that I've been wanting to do for a long time. I bought it a couple years ago as a 69 uh, Dodge Charger Daytona from Revel, and uh, when I bought it, I knew I wanted to convert it into Joe Dirt's car, but uh, it seemed a little daunting at the time, and uh, since then, my skills have improved, and uh, and it didn't seem as challenging now. So I thought, you know, I'll take some time out and, and build it the way I want to. And <clears throat> I think it turned out pretty cool. So I've had a lot of people ask me to uh, to go more in depth on how I, I make my bases or paint the artwork on my bases. And well, this is going to be a little bit different. And I'm going to paint artwork and add some ground texture to it. So it may turn out to look like crap. I don't know. So we'll see. Anyway, uh, let's get on with the video. We'll go more in depth on, on how I get the artwork done. So the first part will be like computer stuff, like nerd stuff. And then, uh, and then we'll get on with painting. All right, now the first step that I do when uh, making a base for my model is obviously choose the size of the base. So I've got a couple different ones here. Um, you can pick these up. I got these at Michael's for like a buck fifty a piece. They're kind of small. They're made out of pine. They're kind of rough. You need to do a lot of sanding. But uh, you know, they're they're buck fifty a piece. Can't beat that. Uh, this one was a little bit more expensive at Michael's. I think it was like twelve, thirteen dollars. Uh, but it's uh, it's a real nice one. And uh, this one is one that my dad made. We just bought some lumber at the uh, local hardware store. He cut it out and routed it. So simple little base. Um, now, when I go to paint the artwork <coughs> on something like this, I want to take care of these knots, and I'll just fill it with filler, sand it, and then uh, throw my primer on there and sand it just to make sure I got it all smooth so I don't have a knot sticking out um, if I'm doing some nice artwork. Now, for this one, I've chosen another base I got at Michael's, which actually had a hole in it, so uh, I went ahead and filled that with a dowel rod. But... Uh, uh, this one <clears throat> is one I'm going to use, and what I've decided I want to do is I'm going to have like dirt texture back here, like a like a dirt road, just to have the car sit on back here, and then I'm going to have Joe Dirt right along the front. Now that's what I came up with in my head. I thought it would look cool. It may turn out to suck, but we'll see. Now uh, I went ahead and stained the edges and put a clear coat on the edges. And then I will mask this off and then we'll spray my primer, white primer over this. And uh, I'll show you all that stuff. But <clears throat> next what I want to do is I'm designing the base. And let me pull out my iPad Pro. And you don't necessarily need an iPad. Um, it, you probably do need a computer if you're going to use a Cricut. Let me turn the lights off here so we can get a better look. Not reflecting. Okay. So, on my iPad, I've got uh, my face ID. I don't know. I'm gonna, I don't want you to see my code. Okay, so <clears throat> what I use for to do a lot of my artwork now, since I've got the, the uh, iPad, is the Procreate app. And it's, a, it's a, uh, an art app. You can draw, you can create letters, you can do all kinds of things. So, I'll just give you an idea of what you can do. Um... I'm gonna go ahead and just draw a letter. We'll draw the letter P. And what's neat about this is, uh, I mean, you can hold down your line and it will uh, straighten things up for you. So it's uh, kind of like uh, an app for uh, to help you draw if you're not good at drawing. <laughs> so, and then you can come in here and uh, add color. You can do all kinds of things. Um, I don't know. It's just it's just a really cool app, and it really does help. Um, so what I've done is I've created the uh, my base in Procreate, and we'll go ahead and I'll show you what uh, how I started off. 
and we'll just run through this really quick. So I just start off and I drew my base. Uh, so it represents the, the wooden part. And then I came along and I created the artwork that I had seen online. So I created this in different sections. So each section is gonna be a different mask that I make in my Cricut. So I created Joe Dirt, and then I'm gonna have a black behind it, a black layer, and then I'm gonna have this blue layer, and then a red layer behind it. So what I did is I saved each one of those, and I'll show you what I saved here. So basically, I just, uh, I saved each one of these layers into my photos and transferred them over into my Cricut. So here are my photos. Uh, yep, here they are. And then I transferred them over into Cricut Design Space. So I've got them in here um, and I've got them sized and how I sized them was, let's shrink this up. I know the size of my base is going to be nine and a half inches. So what I do is I add a circle in the Cricut design space and I make it nine and a half inches. Just like so, okay? And then I can come down here and size all my, my parts. to fit on the nine and a half inches. So I know that, uh, that these letters have to be, I think they are like basically six inches wide. So they're gonna fit on the bottom of my base. I've got them arranged on there. So uh, the next thing I do is I go to make it. Well, let's go back. Let's go ahead and delete this. Next thing I do is I go to make it, and I've got all these colored, you don't have to do that, but I'm doing it so I can keep track in my head. Um, so I'm gonna have two masks for the Joe Dirt letters, and then a mask each for the red and blue background that I'm gonna use. So, I'll get out my, uh, we're gonna move to the Cricut, the actual vinyl cutter, and I'll show you how all that works. <clears throat> well, before we actually get to the Cricut, <clears throat> What I've done is I've actually put, uh, changed the color. So I got, these are both the same size, the actual Joe Dirt letters. So um, I went ahead and just put those together in the same color so I can have them on the same mat. And then the other ones are going to be on different mats. And I've went ahead and labeled those. And what I'm using is Tamiya sticker sheet. Now this is my favorite masking. It's sticky, but not too sticky. It's basically like Tamiya tape, only in a big sheet. Um, so I've got the other ones labeled for where it's going to cut. I've got uh, blue and red because those are going to be similar and I don't want to confuse those. So next what I'm going to do is we'll go over to the Cricut. Okay, and we will turn the Cricut on and open it up. Get this out of the way. And what's cool about the iPad is it will uh, connect via Bluetooth. So let's go... Uh, let's go Bluetooth, uh, Cricut, and we'll go ahead and connect that, connected, go back to our Cricut, come on here and hit continue, I don't know if this is picking it up because it's kind of bright, but, all right, we've got our material on here. And I've got it set on uh, paper because this will cut different things. I've, I've even cut styrene sheet with this. Um, so I've got it set on paper so it does a really shallow cut. And I will just stick my mat in here with the Tamiya sticker sheet like this. And we are ready. And it's going to be as simple as this. Now it'll cut out the Joe Dirt and... Uh, it's pretty simple. Now, there are, there are other vinyl cutters out there. There's the Silhouette, which I think probably has a... Um, instead of the Cricut Design Space, they have their own... Um, 
computer interface, which I think you can do a lot more with than the Cricut design space. Um, but <clears throat> I my wife likes this. Uh, I like it. I make shirts with it. And uh, obviously I make masks. I probably use this more for model making than I do uh, anything else. And this is a pretty simple cut. Now there are limitations with this. <clears throat> Like you can't cut really small letters with this because it will, uh, it, it just can't cut that fine. But uh, with something like this, especially with the artwork that I use for uh, uh, bases, it uh, it does it does perfect. Now I will come back and I will do this on the red and blue, and then we'll take some. Uh, transfer tape and I'll lift them up and they're ready to go for when I get the uh, the uh, primer coat down on the base all right and it is done and I don't know if it will pick that up but we will be able to see it once I uh, lift it up so I'll get the other ones cut and then we'll put them on the transfer okay tape. so now I've got my transfer tape and I'm gonna lift these up and once I lift them I can go ahead and put them back down on the transfer tape backing and uh, there, there won't be any problem with it, with me uh, using this. So let me see if I can, ah, darn it, my tape split. Oh, that stinks. All right. So I don't want to lift both of them up at the same time. I just want to do one. Make sure this is down good and tight, and then it should lift right up. Okay. So there is my first mask. Now, I will have to come in here and uh, I can either take these off now, the center holes, or I can wait and do that once I get them on the, uh, the project. We'll just do them right now. So you can see. And there is my first mask. It's as simple as that. Now I'll go ahead and get the rest of them done and then I will just slap these back on here to be, uh, to be ready for when I go ahead and mask up the, the base. So now that I've got all my masks cut, so I've got the two Joe Dirts, one's gonna be yellow, one's gonna be black. Uh, I've got the surrounding area and I'll show you how I'm gonna use that, but that's gonna be the only uh, negative mask that I use. And then uh, I've got my blue and my red, which is slightly larger, okay? So we'll put these aside. And the next thing I wanna do is I wanna spray this with some primer, but I'm gonna mask off this area. So how I'm gonna do this is I'm just gonna cut little thin strips of tape and run it along the edge because it is rather difficult to get a nice clean edge around a surface like this. If you can see how it's, it goes up and it's, it's a, uh, so you want to use thin pieces of tape. Now I could probably come back with some uh, Tamiya tape for curves, but um, I don't know. I, I find this way is the best, but it is rather tedious to get it all the way around. I only have to use these thin strips right around the edge. So I'm just using my Infinity cutting mat and I'm cutting thin strips and I am just going to go along and mask off right at this upper edge so I can get a nice clean line where my painted upper surface is gonna meet with the stained and clear coated edge. And then I will come back in with uh, thicker strips of tape and mask off the rest of it. So that's how I'm gonna do it. And then I'll come back and traditionally I've used this. I just went up to the store and picked these up. But uh, I've traditionally used this Rust-Oleum Universal Bonding Primer. It works really well. But while I was up there, I saw this other Rust-Oleum stuff. So I might, might, try, to, might try this. Um, 
but I know this stuff doesn't lift up, but it does take a little bit to, to dry. So uh, just make sure when you, whenever you, you put your primer coats down with spray cans that you do light coats and, and layer them. Otherwise, if you put one thick coat, it's going to take forever to dry and it's just a pain in the butt. So I'm going to get this masked up. I'm going to spray it and then we should be ready to paint. All right, fellas, I've got the primer down. <clears throat> it's had a uh, few hours to dry. I went ahead and sanded it a couple times and then uh, put a final coat on there. It seems pretty durable, but we'll know once I start lifting the tape up. Now, the colors that I'm going to use are what you see here. I've got yellow, red. I've got some orange that I mixed up, which really isn't necessary if I use the red, but uh, I'm going to use it anyway. <clears throat> and then my blues. Now, <clears throat> I went ahead and put the negative mask down. And this is going to be the largest portion of my lettering. In other words, uh, this is going to be the red outline right along here. So I'm going to use this to base my uh, putting down all my other masks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with the yellow for the lettering, and I'll come back with the orange, and I'll, I'll uh, make an orange gradient on the lettering. Then I'll put my mask down for Joe Dirt. I'll come in with some black and then uh, mask that down and then the blue and do a gradient with the two colors of blue put my mask down for the blue and then i can spray the red outline <clears throat> you'll see how this works so i've already got some yellow mixed up and we're just going to spray this now you don't necessarily have to mask off all around here because i'm going to paint paint the rest of this a tan color and i'm going to have some uh ground texture up above, but we're going to go ahead and lay down our first color. Okay. Now I'm going to come in with the orange. <clears throat> I'm going to make my gradient. And when you do this, you want to go instead of, so this is the bottom of my, my lettering. <clears throat> and instead of uh, making it dark and then moving up, what I'll do is I'll start at the bottom and spray towards the bottom so I can keep my yellow yellow and my orange orange, if that makes any sense. Okay, I think that'll work. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put down my first set of lettering masks, which is the Joe Dirt. Joe Dirt. And I'm gonna try to center this as best as I can. I think that looks pretty good. I think. And we'll find out. Go ahead and lift up my transfer tape. <clears throat> I'm going to spray black around the letter so I can get that uh, somewhat 3D look. It's not really technically 3D because it is um, just the way I, I cut the mask. So I'm going to get some black. I'm going to go around the edges of this with the black. Okay, I went ahead and applied the second set of Joe Dirt letters over top, just offset of the original yellow letters. Still got the yellow letters masked. And now I'm going to spray the blue background. So I'm gonna start with the dark blue because I do have some black here that I wanna to try to cover up as best I can. 
it might take a little bit to cover it up. And it could be, I could, I could even go over this with a coat of primer or white or something, but uh, I don't think that's going to be necessary here. Okay, now we can carefully peel up <clears throat> our letters and see what we got underneath. Now we're gonna leave this uh, negative mask surrounding it on. So just carefully peel this up. And I probably won't do this all on camera because I do have to be careful. You can see what the letters are gonna look like. Right there. All right. <clears throat> So there's how they look. Now I'm gonna go ahead and rip the rest of these off. I'll probably let this, the blue set up a little bit because it's a, um, a gloss paint. And uh, then we'll come down and I'll lay the blue down, <clears throat> the blue mask down, paint the uh, border white and then red because I want that red to really pop on the border. And then I can throw the final mask down when I, so I can paint the rest of the, uh, the base. Okay, next what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my mask that I have labeled blue and I'm going to put it down here and try to center it so that I can paint the red border. And I'm going to try to just center this as best that I can so it's as even as possible. And it may not be perfect but that's okay. Artwork's rarely ever perfect. So I will just lift this up now, in order to save a little bit of time, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to spray some white and then spray my red and uh, so I can get my border. Now, I could just come and spray the red right over the blue, but it dulls down the red and uh, if I spray white, the red's gonna pop a little bit more. So, I'm gonna get on with that. We'll come back. I'll have lifted the, uh, the blue mask off then we can put the red down and then I can paint the rest of the base. All right, this is probably the last video segment and then uh, we'll just jump straight to the pictures because I'm gonna do the groundwork and stuff off camera. Uh, it just takes a while and rather than extending the video any longer than that it, uh, it probably needs to be, I like to keep my videos as you know, uh, under 30 minutes. Um, so this is going to be the last part you see, and then I'll show some pictures. Uh, one thing before I do put the red mask on, which is going to cover everything, including the red border, then I can lift up the negative mask and I will be able to paint everything. So uh, we'll just go ahead and throw this on real quick and then lift that up. So this should fit right in here. And then I will be able to paint the surrounding area without ruining my paintwork. And I should be able to lift this up and it should be fine. Hopefully I didn't overshoot it right here. Might have a little touch up to do. Lift it up from this side. Yeah, I did kind of overshoot. So I may have a little bit of white showing over here, but I can touch that up. No big deal. What happens when you mask all this stuff? So there we go. It should be covered. My lettering's all done. Now I can spray everything else. Uh, one other thing I do want to show you that I'm going to add into the ground texture 
And if you guys have watched Joe Dirt the movie, you'll know what this is. It's the uh, the meteor that fell. Not really a meteor, but uh, it's what fell down and he was eating uh, hamburgers and french fries off of it. So I thought that'd be kind of cool. I made that with my uh, Magic Sculpt resin. And once that dries, we'll paint it up and it could be a, you know, be a cool little accent feature to the uh, display. So uh, thanks for watching. I'll flash up some pictures and uh, see you on the next episode.